During the last years, we learned to limit the rate of uh, restenosis after endovascular procedures. And, but um, a meta-analysis last year showed an increased mortality after using drug-coded balloon technologies. And um, today we will like to discuss the impact of this meta-analysis on our practice. Mm. And um, I am here with the panel of experts on this um, type of technology and I would like to go uh, directly to um, Dr. Holden and um, ask before we discuss this uh, his perspective in, uh, in this matter. Um, what you think about the meta-analysis, what you think about the, the impact of this meta-analysis in our, specifically in your practice? Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks, Giovanni. I mean, it's, uh, I think, first of all, we have to take this very seriously. And I think uh, most of the reviews have said that it's a very well-performed meta-analysis. So this is something we, we take very seriously. In the background, we know that there's a clear patency advantage with drug eluting technologies, and that certainly is proven. We know also that there are quite a lot of questions about the meta-analysis, and as we know, there's a lot of work going into reviewing uh, the data, and particularly at an individual patient-level data. But in the meantime, what do we do with our patients who are claudicants? Uh, and certainly, uh, a lot, luckily, a lot of our patients are parts of device trials, so we continue to enrol these patients in these trials. We've modified the consent forms to mention the meta-analysis, but we continue to uh, enrol in those trials. Outside of the trials, my personal belief is that the patency advantages are clearly proven. The meta-analysis is, uh, is not proven at this point. I think we inform our patients of the meta-analysis findings, but the vast majority of our patients continue to opt for the patency advantages of drug-eluting technologies. Thank you so much. Dr. Lamston, what is your point of view, your practice in Houston where you work? Yeah, so I'm the guy with the British accent who works in the United States, so ultimately my authority is the FDA. <laughs> Um, and they've played a significant role in how we have to interpret this. And I'd say that my position is evolving and more evolved tonight than it was this morning. I thought what was done today that uh, Roger and Charing Cross put on was very, very helpful in trying to bring some clarity to it. Thank you. So we have the perspective from New Zealand, from USA, now back to the old Europe. Um, and we have Professor uh, Jofik. Um, Jan, what do you think about this uh, topic? You need, you what know, is your attitude? So far, I didn't change my practice, and I, I think that my colleague also didn't change their practice about uh, packed uh, cell eluting devices to treat uh, SFA disease. Why? First, and I completely agree, uh, we, we should take as a serious signal what Katsanos did. And he did a great job, you know, he make a scientific analysis, he have a result. But it's not a level one evidence. And we should take in mind that uh, all of these studies are under power in terms of death analysis. Secondly, a very important point, if you see the natural history of PID at one year for Claudicant, the death rate is 5.3% in comparison to 2.3% in Katsanos disease. If you look at the race pain patient at one year, the death rate is 20%, and in case of tissue loss, it's 28% of death at one year. So it's not the case in this randomized study. So uh, I think I am still comfortable to use this kind of uh, devices. Definitely, we should, we should assess. And I want to know, in Germany, do you change your mind also about uh, packed cell uh, eluting devices? Uh, personally, I didn't change uh, my attitude, but uh, in, in Germany, the situation is a bit confused because we have two vascular societies, the angiology society and the uh, surgical societies, and they have two different uh, ways to uh, m make the interpretation of these uh, results. 
So we have to wait for the decision in June. Alan, you mentioned um, the FDA mm -hmm. as authority, and they recommend uh, to limit the use of uh, paclitaxel to patients who are high risk for restenosis. Mm -hmm. Now we should try to make a definition of these patients. What will be your definition of high risk uh, a patient at a high risk for stenosis? So again, it assumes that I can specifically identify that patient up front. I mean, there are clearly patients who have long segment recanalization. Now, what is that? 15 centimeters or longer? They're clearly going to be at higher risk. I still going to have to have that conversation with the patient. Andrew? Your definition? Well, it's, it's a tough one, I'd agree with Alan. I mean, you could argue that anyone having plain balloon angioplasty is at risk for restenosis and therefore should benefit from a drug-eluting technology. I mean, the SVS uh, provided some, uh, some guidelines recently, and as Alan mentioned, you know, long lesions was one of these at high risk for restenosis, but also female patients, patients, diabetics, chronic renal failure, critical limb ischemia. So all of those are, are associated with increased uh, risk of restenosis. But I agree, there's no hard end point there. I think essentially the more complex the disease we get, the greater the benefit for drug-eluting technologies. But I think it's, as it stands at the moment, it's a very difficult conversation to create some kind of binary end point on when and when, you, and when not you should offer some of these technologies. Thank you. Uh, Jan. In the meta-analysis, were included uh, results of patients treated with the varying um, doses of paclitaxel uh, with different recipients and uh, with drug eluting stents, also with the polymer. Uh, what is important in your decision making? What you use um, in, uh, in in your patient? I think we should make uh, difference between DS and DCB first. If you look like at DC, if you look at DCB, since a while everybody say no class effect in terms of efficacy, but also we should say no class effect in terms of side effect. <laughs> So I think definitely we should investigate uh, each devices, each uh, DCB, um, to look after uh, some death rate, some adverse events, of course. But so far as uh, current uh, trials are not designed to uh, look after uh, the death rate. They are, they are designed to look after patency, TLR, but not, uh, not about death rate. And only post-market registry, national registry, will be able to provide to the physician, to the society, this kind of, of information. So, so far, we pull a, a randomized study not designed to look after death, so it's just expectation and not level one evidence. Jan have you incorporated this um, guidance also uh, informing your patients in France? Definitely we should uh, inform the patient, but to make the patient relax, not to <laughs> not worry about it. I think the most patients couldn't really follow this discussion. I think it's more it? important to tell the patient that PID is very uh, uh, severe disease. Uh, the death rate is high in case of PID. I think it's better to advise, to, to tell the patient, smart, sp stop smoking, you know, and uh, just to, uh, yeah, to advise on the packed cell stuff. Smoking, for example, kill patients. We are sure about that. Finally, I would like to discuss um, the uh, meeting, the coming meeting in June of the FDA. And uh, what are the expectations we have? Um, do you think that they will correct their, their position based on the patient uh, level data recently published? If you think about every other drug that causes side effects, it's related to dose. So it's not like radiation where you can get so-called stochastic effects unrelated to dose. Pharmacological side effects are related to dose. So 
I think if uh, if we can clearly show that paclitaxel in this review is not related, this mortality is not related to paclitaxel dose, it's much more likely this is an association rather than a causation. I think we are at the end of this uh, discussion about this uh, extremely important topic. I have to confess that I am really frustrated because I thought I have uh, a method to reduce the hospitalization of the patient, to see the patient again because of restenosis or reocclusion. And now I feel pushed back to, to the last century or millennium, if you like. Mm. But uh, we have to face this um, specific situation and I hope that the authorities decide for the patients. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.